What's going on, NMO fans? This is Alex Sexis, your host and CEO of the NMO Migrant Arcade Show. Thank you for your support for over the last uh, six and a half years doing this thing on the side and everything. So uh, that's greatly appreciated. A couple of things, I, uh, a couple of announcements I want to put out there. Um, first thing, I know that uh, the show presentation is about to change uh, with you know some donations that came in we're trying to make things look a little more professional so we're kind of designating an area to kind of uh, do green screen or blue screen or whatever you call it to kind of have things in the background so it's a work in progress so bear with us as we uh, make the transition into looking more legitimate um, also July 21st uh, KOTC, they're running uh, a Street Fighter Cross Tekken and Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom event over at the Hyatt in Marstown, New Jersey. Uh, we're going to be there to support, like, you know, trying to get back into the tournament scene since coming back from duty. So um, I got to play an Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom uh, 3 at the Microsoft Store at a successful Bridgewater uh, Microsoft Store event. Which is a lot of fun. I wish I got there early enough to actually play Cross Tekken. Which was much better without gems, by the way. But um, I just wanted to uh, thank those that actually came out and supported. And also, I wanted to put something out there. If certain individuals want to get butthurt about how tournaments are run, if you're not fucking running an event, shut the fuck up. You know, especially if it's a free event. You know what I mean? And I don't care how that comes off, but... Come on, have some tact and some coot about you guys because, you know, you can't bitch and complain when the tournament at the Microsoft was free. This applies to one individual that showed up, but I'm just going to leave it at that. But uh, in any case, a couple things because this is the be part one before we go into uh, any podcast. And uh, a lot of things have transpired. Uh, on the last, uh, the last time I did a mini short, Evo uh, just concluded, but that's going to be on a separate thing, uh, you know, I'm probably going to tip my hat into the ring in terms of commentary, breaking things down with the lingo and all that, so I'm not going to cover Evo in this particular mini short, but just mainly on the news. Now, first topic that comes up to mind right now is uh, Marvel vs. Capcom Origins. I'm very happy for this. But then again, I went, ah, meh, you know, it's missing a couple of titles. Now, that dumbass Sev, uh, Sev or whatever, you know who I'm talking about, the guy that doesn't know his foot from his asshole. But anyway, uh, Capcom, unfortunately, for Marvel vs. Capcom Origins, they cannot put Street Fighter, no, not uh, Marvel vs. what is it, Street Fighter vs. X-Men, Children of the Atom, anything that's X-Men um, branded, there's things going on with the licensing. And, you know, I read some comments on Event Hubs and uh, YouTube. Yeah, that licensing stuff really is a pain in the ass, you know? Like, when it comes to just executing certain deals, you can't do it because this person has the rights or that person has the rights. It's just, you know, if it's something that enough people want, they should be able to come up with a special terms of agreement to just make these things happen. You know what I mean? Because to me, Marvel vs. Capcom Origins is, is feels a bit incomplete. You're only getting two games. Good games, don't get me wrong. You have Marvel Super Heroes, vs., uh, Marvel Super Heroes and Marvel vs. Capcom 1. The X-Men titles, I mean, I, you know, for me, what really started me in the Versus series was X-Men vs. Street Fighter. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, oh man, this is freaking awesome. I had a great soundtrack to boot, you know? So, you're not get, we're not getting that. And then we're not getting Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter, which was actually, to me, the first Marvel vs. Capcom because you had two brands from, you know, from Marvel and Capcom fighting each other. And that was the first game to feature assist. And it, since it had, like, a complete arranged soundtrack, we got big on the music of, of, of the games. Like, for instance, if you use, like, a special character, like Armored Spider-Man, Shadow Agent, or whatever, that dramatic theme song that, that was their background music, you won't get to, you know, hear it. But, I don't know, they, they were saying that, well, 
Christian Sevenson was talking some bullshit that that was a weak game and such and such. I mean, it, would it have hurt you guys just to include that in the package? Like, because now you probably won't ever get to see the titles fans because now, let's say they do decide to release it down in the future. Who the fuck is going to care at that point? You know what I mean? But I think it was a boneheaded move. To not put uh, Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter. That was a good game, in my opinion. But if you're going to release an origin, Marvel Super Heroes, Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter, and Marvel vs. Capcom would have been alright. But, hey, it's whatever. They fucked it up again. But, I uh, will say, the trailer looks great. Looks like they're adding a lot of uh, good, cool features. And uh, being that they're, they took a lot from what was going on with Third Strike Online and are gonna improve on this, that'd be cool. But, Shinwa made a good point. They should have used the Dreamcast port of Marvel vs. Capcom, the original, and added four player support because apparently they're using the arcade ROM to keep it like arcade perfect. That's fine and good, but the Dreamcast had the best version of Marvel vs. Capcom. Four player, crossover I mean hell that that kind of that's how the 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 four player tag team setup should have been done in cross Tekken but that's that's a whole other story but I'm happy that we're at least getting that but you know I'm kind of bummed out we're not getting certain titles in the Marvel vs Capcom origin uh, stuff so moving on big waves at Capcom apparently Capcom got wise and figured, okay, you know what? We already, you know, lost uh, Seth Killian to Sony, who's working with, you know, SCEA for uh, Fighting All-Stars or whatever. You know what I mean? And all of a sudden, now they're going to release the 12 uh, characters on July 31st. You know, I kind of shrugged my shoulders at that because... Too much is wrong with Street Fighter Cross Tekken anyway. And it's funny how they conveniently release these characters after EVO to kind of extend the life until next year. You know what I mean? So, to me, it doesn't move me too much. And then, uh, I don't know. Capcom's trying to save face right now or try to, hey, you know what? We'll release it a little bit early and such and such. And I guess they got wise also that they're trying to, they were trying to help push Vita systems and help Sony sell systems. And then, seven, uh, and then you got uh, Seth Killian leaving to go to Sony. Is this like a big F you to Sony now? Or, 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 I, I don't know, but it's whatever. It, it's too, a little too, too little too late. Moving on. Um, I don't know if any of you guys were big on... JoJo's Adventure for the the Dreamcast and uh, PlayStation 2. I like that game a lot. Very cool. But the PlayStation version was a little bit better because they had extra modes and, uh, uh, you know, extra scenarios in there. But now you got uh, JoJo's Adventure, Battle All-Stars. And it's also created by CyberConnect2, developers of Asura's Wrath, which I'm a fan of. But... Am I hearing this right that it is a PS3 exclusive? I'm getting tired of this shit, man. Good games stuck on one system. It's like, you know, it's it, it's a third-party title. You know what I mean? Like, what the, what the fuck is going on with that shit? So now I won't get to play JoJo's Adventure. Even though I have a PS3, I'm, I'm not... In light of what Sony's been doing with the backdoor deals, I'm kind of like... Two seconds from taking this PS3 and going to GameStop or sticking it on Craigslist or something. I barely use the shit as is. And I don't want to go hook up the PS3 just to play that one game. It should be on multiple consoles. And you'll actually get more money developing multi-platform. Kojima got smart. Why don't you companies get smart? CyberConnect. I know... I don't know what the rationale with this, but maybe it's a time exclusive. We'll wait and see. I don't want to jump the gun, but I want to play that JoJo's Adventure game. Cyber Connect 2. I'm a big supporter of you guys, so hopefully good things will come out of this. Next, how many of you 
Dungeon Fighter Online fans actually watch this show? Hmm. TikTok. That game will be coming out on the 13th. What? Uh, two days from now. Because it's going after midnight. Um, I will be on it. It's about. It's going to be for 800 Microsoft points. Um, Dungeon Fighter Online. Fall of Hendon Meyer. I played it on the PC. And if you guys remember. I did uh, a little featurette. And it was actually extensive too. With different characters. On the NMO channel. So. If you guys like are big into Guardian Heroes, side scroller beat 'em ups, uh, raids, and all that stuff, Alex Lexus will definitely be on there with you. So make sure you leave your game attack below, and then we'll kind of coordinate and, and 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 play together. All right. Um, also, this is shout out to Black Dragon. He also uh, he sent me something in my notes that I'm looking at right now. Why is it? For the Street Fighter 25th Anniversary Collection, how come the PS3 is getting the Alpha, all three Alpha games, and competing the, the competitive system not getting that? Shinwar says it might have been inked while we were at the Microsoft store just discussing over lunch that uh, Sony might have made that deal already. But then keep in mind that Sony already had those games from prior systems so it looked like it's a backwards compatibility thing or something with that but I don't think that's fair because look at the the fighting in community is just it spans over the Xbox over the uh, the Wii and all that and you're just sticking it to us by making it Sony exclusive this shit's really something to, again number strike number two so let me know what you guys think about that, this exclusive bullshit, because it's really like, ugh. Now it's not the time for that, you know what I mean? Because right now, to me, Microsoft has more of an extensive library, a better online experience, and I just hate to have to go back to another system just for one or two games. That that pissed me off with Metal Gear Solid 4, you know what I mean? I'm If it's good enough, I'll play it on the other system, but... When I'm done with it, that's it. You know, I haven't played Metal Gear Solid 4 in forever. You know what I mean? I have it sitting here collecting dust. But anyway, um, last topic before I take it down on this mini short. Animal fans, have you ever been in a situation where you're playing Street Fighter Cross Tekken or you're playing Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom and yes, don't mind that I did somebody hooked me up with this game. Um, after Evo, I was kind of interested in trying to give my Ultimate another chance. But getting back on, on point. You ever lose to somebody that, that got freaking lucky? Either execution or lag. They take your points and you never get a rematch. Hmm... I'm hoping, and I'm proposing that in the future of fighting games, that Capcom adds a replay option so that, okay, yeah, let's say you lose to like a, a noob, or you're you're a higher grade and you lose to a noob, and you lose like 60 points in Street Fighter Cross Tekken. They should allow you to do double or nothing or get a rematch. You know what I mean? But oftentimes, chances, you'll see a lot of people, they won't give you the rematch. And that's another thing. What makes a, a fighter better is the ability to adapt. Yeah, you may not be able to adapt in one fight, but this is why the Japanese are, are better at, at adapting to a situation because they'll you, they play best out of ten, and by the the eighth or ninth set, they're like, oh, I know how this guy, I know how to get around them. But after one match in an American match online, somebody it steals your points and runs, you never get to play them again. That's I think that's bullshit, but. Anyway, let me know what you guys think. This is, again, part one to the same topics that I discussed in this mini short. We're going to discuss it with Nelson and Demizel. So, let me know what you guys think. Please support us. Check us out on July 21st in um, Morristown, New Jersey. And I'll see you next time on the Animal Amiga Arcade Show. Peace.